Shelly. And Scott. Welcome. Good morning. And damn, is it cold outside. Super cold. We're uh, having a, a stretch of uh, stretch of sub-zero weather. It's barely getting up to the positive numbers in the middle of the day. Thankfully, we still are getting some sunshine, so we're right. still charging our batteries right, right now. I don't know how good our generator would start if we had to start it. We may yeah. find out later today. Uh, typically, when you need something the most, that's when it tends to break down. Yes. And we had another experience like that this last week, didn't yes. we? Yes, yes we did. <laughs> Fun times. Those of you that know us know we live off grid. Our only source of heat is wood stove. Um, and our wood stove broke. Uh, what actually broke was the, um, I guess you'd call it a bypass cover. If it was in a standard wood stove, if you've been following us for a while, you know that uh, we have a uh, soapstone Woodstock stove company, uh, Fireview, and uh, they're beautiful stoves. They're made right across the border in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. They're very efficient, and one of the reasons they're so efficient is because you have your primary burn, which is your actual firebox where you put the wood, and then you have a secondary burn that is above it in which the smoke goes up through two catalytic elements and reburns again before it goes into the chimney. The result of that is you get a lot more heat out of your firewood and you get a lot less smoke going up your chimney and a lot less heat. Uh, also, your chimney stays a lot cleaner and you don't need to clean it anywhere near as often. Again, everything everything that can be burned is being burned. So it's they're, they're very efficient. Uh, we didn't buy this stove. It came with a house. I really don't know how old it is. I would have to guess probably 10 or 15 years old. If, if I was going to guess. but Because yeah. um, we've had it six or seven. So. Right, right. Right. So And uh, it's, it's we burn pretty much well, no, exclusively hardwood. Um, in the Northeast, we have a, a good supply of hardwood. I know a lot of areas don't. You have to burn softwood. Uh, it's altogether a different thing. Hardwood gets a lot hotter, stays a lot hotter, and it, it can be hard on cast iron parts. And uh, this is the first time... I've had a stove break. Uh, we had a Vermont Castings one prior to this at our other house that had some of the cast iron break in it, and I had to repair stuff on that too. But I don't remember it being below zero and needing the stove so bad when it broke. No. I, no. And this was beyond something that we could wait. We couldn't. Uh, we couldn't wait and fix it in the spring because without the secondary burn working, I don't think we would have had enough firewood to last us through. Until springtime. Yeah, it was going through some wood. Because it's uh, it's partially, it would be like running your wood stove. If you know uh, the old style dampers that you used to put in the stovepipe, well, this would be like running that with it partway open all the time. You know, I'm not saying that you'd run your wood stove totally closed up, but you run it pretty close if you want the heat to come out. The idea is to keep get the heat into the room and not up the chimney. So no matter how hot of a fire we were building in this stove, most of the heat was going up the chimney, and that's dangerous. You could get a chimney fire, and it's, it's really not very efficient. So we took a stab at it and tried to order the parts, and lo and behold, they had them. And in a few days, we had them. Right. So. From the same company that the stove came from. Yeah, yeah. We, I ordered the parts factory direct from uh, Woodstock Stove Company. Yep, and that's just over the border. That's right. Yeah, they're in, in uh, Lebanon, Lebanon, New Hampshire. Yep. Um, very good company to deal with. Their stoves are extremely expensive. I don't believe we ever would have bought one. Like I said, this stove came with a house, so uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty good about shipping and packing their parts. Mm -hmm. And telling you all the stuff that you need to do the job. And it came pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 But the part was only, what does it say there? $35. Oh, $35. $35. Yeah. And then shipping was through UPS. So it was 26, 26. and change. So but you bad. also got to remember, it's a piece of cast iron. So it was, it was yeah. fairly heavy. It was and heavy. It's also, you know, a pretty good sized part. This morning we got up and... Uh, on a cold day, let the stove go out and get to be room temperature or as close as we could so that I could handle the internal parts. But. Fortunately, uh, <laughs> we, 
we've never really talked too much about it, but we do have a second wood stove that's in the basement. It's not as efficient as the one that's upstairs. I don't think, I mean, we could have used it to heat the place for the rest of the winter, but I think we'd have gone through a yeah. bunch of firewood that we really don't have. So it, we were still better off just, just fixing the, the soapstone stove. Yeah. But in the meantime, we started a good rip-roaring fire in the, uh, in the stove downstairs and opened up all the doors going down to the basement to let the heat up through. So the house wouldn't get too cold while we were putzing around with the, with the soapstone stove. Um, we had to take out a lot of extra parts that were associated with the cover, the bypass cover, just to get to it. So I had to undo the actuating lever, this, these two bolts here on the back of the uh, cover, and then your two little hinge blocks are up here beside the uh, catalytic units, or what are they, what they call the burner units. And we found out, as you can see, as we tore it apart, that the catalytic units also need to be replaced, as does the bottom pan on the secondary burn. We don't have the parts to do that right now, and I, I really want to do it and get it done, but I think it's more important to get this stove back online so we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace the damper for the secondary burn. And we're going to worry about this other stuff when it's warm weather and we don't need the stove quite so much. Right. It still may not be quite as efficient as it's supposed to be, but I'm willing to bet it's going to burn a lot better. Let's hope so. So we're going to go ahead and remove all the unnecessary parts that we know are broken. Take these hinge blocks apart. Now there isn't very much room in here. You know, on this particular model, you're going to need, you know, the right tools. Having the right tools always helps with any job. You're going to have to have probably a short extension. And I got to have a couple of sockets. The good and, thing is I do need to mention that they do put in a really good frame of reference with your part that they send. And it has pictures and it tells you what parts or what tools you need um, and step by step. And then also on the bottom of on their website on the bottom of whatever stove it is that you're working on it has a how-to video how to change the different parts to it as well right so as we usually do we didn't go by the instructions we just <laughs> dove right in <laughs> of course it was actually fairly simple the only thing when you're working with a wood stove it's my experience that things come apart either pretty easy or pretty difficult. It depends on the stove, how hot it's been, what kind of bolts there are. Also, they have uh, their own never sees that they use for high heat. They send us a little envelope of that that you wanna, you wanna use so you can get it apart the next time. Supposedly helps with that. I hope it does, because it looks like we gotta take this one apart again come spring. Burn units, the catalytic units, they look like, we call them waffles. And as you can see, the one on the on the left side is pretty well burned out. These are made of titanium, so they're fairly expensive. I think they were around $150 for the pair of them. Yeah. And uh, if we'd known they were bad, I probably would have taken the jump and bought them. But I don't know if I'd have gone ahead and put them in because of the pan below it that is seems to be burned out too because it's going to mm -hmm. let the flames totally up through the middle and... I just as soon not burn out another one before we have that fixed. So right. we're just going to go with what we have until spring. If it's been burning as good as it has up to this point, we'll replace this cover. It won't be a problem. Now what I've found out is there isn't enough for room for the uh, bolts that hold the combustor to be started after you've tightened up the bolts for these hinge blocks. So you kind of want to get everything in there and start it ahead of time before you go ahead and tighten anything up. And then as you tighten stuff up, it will kind of find its own home, go into the hole it belongs in, you know, in the recessed spot where the cover drops in and where the, the uh, combustor unit drops into its little square hole. And once you start, everything just kinds of, kind of drops in. I'm gonna try the handle to see if it still works the way it's supposed to. Right, and it looks like it does. It looks like it fits good. And I think we're gonna start a fire. Yeah, and by the magic of editing, 
Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Feel that heat. Don't you think? Yeah, I think it works great. So there we go. Saved again by the internet and fast parts coming from Woodstock Stove Company. We didn't freeze to death. That's right. We made it. Now, I don't... I do want to say I still believe this is one of the best stoves that's made. You're always going to have to maintain your stoves. Um, if this was a cheaper stove, a lot of people would have replaced it and bought a, a new stove. But the thing is, when you're dealing with stoves on this level, you're typically talking about a stove that costs $3,500 to $4,000 to purchase a new one. So in our case, it's way better to buy the parts and fix it. And then come springtime, we're going to do a complete overhaul on it, replace the combustor units or the catalytic units, if you want to call them that, and the little pan that blocks off the secondary burn underneath it. And it should be as good as new. Like a brand new stove. Maybe put new gaskets in it while we're at it. Yes, that's going to happen too. But uh, She's going to feel like a new girl. That's. I think she does already. Look <laughs> at it burn. Yeah, that's nice. A little makeover, shall yeah, we say. It's in hair and makeup. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there's another, another how-to video if you ever happen to have one of these stoves and they break. And yeah. uh, really what we're doing here is just showing you another typical day and the life of off-grid wood-burning wonderfulness. Yeah. So you guys, again, like and subscribe if you like what you see. And less drama and more what actually happens in the off-grid world. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, come back again.